Hello everybody, welcome to the I Am IT Geek YouTube channel. My name is Shabazz Dan, as ever, I am the IT Geek. Welcome back to another episode, well, episode two, well, technically three if you count the introduction to our series intro. But we are in, I've started a new series recently, which is around Microsoft VDI, because um, since I did my original, as I said, right in the series intro, since I did my original sort of Zero to Hero series for AVD, and all the time, but it started off as WVD. Um, I've not really done any VDI content specifically around Microsoft Cloud, and so much has happened. We've got so many new solutions with VDI now for different use cases and different different sort of industries. So I thought I'd I'd, I'd go back to it and do you know a, a bit of a series around Microsoft VDI. So we've started off by talking about DevBox and what that is. Um, so in the last episode, kind of introduced the, the, the topic and what it is. Um, we did a little demo of creating a dev center, which is sort of where, where it's all managed by. So let's get started with this episode. And let's continue with this uh, this Microsoft DevBox um, sort of uh, topic, shall I say. So this is my Microsoft VDI series. Um, and today is going to be part one of a Microsoft DevBox architecture sort of topic that I want to talk about. And there's a couple of parts because it's quite it's a lot to talk about, really, a lot to show. I kind of wanted to break up into smaller videos. So we're going to talk about how it works and then we're going to look at the actual architecture diagram and I'll just talk a little bit about that. And then in part two of the architecture um, video, which will be the next episode, I'm actually going to go into more detail around the different concepts of the architecture. Uh, so this is a bit of a diagram on, on, on around um, Microsoft DevBox. Um, but Microsoft DevBox, it, it builds on, on the same foundations as, as what's called the Azure deployment environment. So the deployment environments provides developers with sort of pre-configured cloud-based environments for developing um, applications. And both services are complementary and, and, and share certain architectural components such as the dev center or a project. So how does, how does the dev box work? So before developers can create their boxes in a developer portal, you, you know, we need to set up that dev center, which we did in the last episode of the demo, and they set up projects with Microsoft DevBox. Um, so we're not going to be quite the place to set up projects yet. A couple more things we need to do in preparation. But we'll be doing that in an upcoming demo. Uh, and you also need sort of shared resources for these projects, such as your know, DevBox definitions and network connections. And we're going to be doing network connections in today's demo. There's no limit on the number of dev centers that you can create, but most organizations only really need one. Uh, and a DevBox project is the point of access for development, development team. So you assign a, develop, a developer the DevBox user role um, to, a, to a project to grant them developer permissions to create DevBoxes. But they've got no administrative access on there. You can create one or more projects in a Dev Center. We'll be looking at that at some point in one of the demos coming up. A DevBox definition specifies the configuration of the DevBoxes, such as the virtual machine image and compute resources for the dev box. And you can either choose a VM image from the Azure Marketplace, or you can use an Azure Compute Gallery to, to use sort of custom VM images. And projects contain a collection of those dev box pools. Uh, a dev box pool specifies a configuration for the dev boxes, such as the dev box definition, the network connection, and sort of other settings. And all dev boxes that are created from the dev box pool share the same configuration. Uh, and the network connection, which we're going to be looking at today in the demo, so this is this is associated with the DevBox pool. It determines where the DevBox is hosted. So you can use the Microsoft hosted network connection or bring your own Azure network connection in. Uh, and you might use an Azure sort of network connection if you need control over the virtual network, if you require access to corporate resources, or to authenticate to a DevBox's Active Directory account. And developers can create a DevBox from a DevBox pool by using the developer portal. Uh, they might choose from a specific pool based on the VM image, uh, the compute resources or location where the DevBox is hosted. And once the DevBox is running, DevBox users can remotely connect to the remote desktop client like Windows app or, or directly from the browser. And then DevBox users have full control over the DevBoxes if, if you know, they've created and can you know, manage them as, as from that developer portal. Uh, so... Let's talk a little bit about the architecture now. So the hosted on behalf, or oh, that's what it's called, the hosted on behalf architecture, lets Microsoft services, after they've delegated appropriate and, and, and scope permissions to a virtual network by a sub subscription owner, attach hosted Azure services to a customer subscription. 
This connectivity model lets a, a Microsoft service provide software or SaaS, software as a service or SaaS, and user license services as opposed to standard consumption-based services. Uh, Microsoft DevBox uses the host on behalf of architecture, which means that the DevBox is, as I mentioned, uh, the, 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 the three, two, one. Microsoft DevBox manages the capacity and in-region availability in the Microsoft DevBox subscriptions. And Microsoft DevBox determines the Azure region to host the DevBox based on the network config connection you select when creating that DevBox pool. To protect your data, DevBox can also encrypt your disk by, by default and it uses platform managed keys. So you don't need to enable BitLocker and doing so you can prevent from accessing your DevBox essentially. And from a network connection perspective, you can choose between a Microsoft hosted network connectivity and an Azure network connection that you can create in your own subscription. Okay, so we're going to go to demo. We're going to create that network connection now and show how we can integrate that sort of um, your, your, your Azure networks that you've created yourself and manage yourself. So join me in the demo. Hello, welcome back to the demo portal. So we are we want to do some network connections first. So here you can go to the top here and type in network connections. I've got it there. Um, so this is gonna gonna allow us to integrate. So as, as we've seen, we've got two options with network, and you can either use the Microsoft uh, network, or you can use the Azure network. And the Azure network is your own managed network. So I'm going to show you how to create a network connection and how to link that to your Dev Center. So let's go to create a network connection and again, as I've before. So <clears throat> do we want Azure Active Directory join, or do we want something which is Entra join, special so specifically, or do we want a hybrid? So we can do either Entra. So we'll create two, so we can we can mix and match depending on what we want. So let's select the relevant resource group. <clears throat> Give it a name. So ITG for I am IT Geek. IT Geek dash network connection dash. Um, Entra, let's call it, right? And then we can integrate it with whichever one we want, really. So let's go with our dev box. And we've got we've got a subnet in there. Simple as review, create a tag if you want, review it, and click create. So that create, and then we'll create another one with we're gonna do hybrid network first. I'll show you how we can do that. Okay, so that took a few minutes to, to do. Let's go back to network connections. See, we've got that one already. So let's go to create again. We want a hybrid this time, and you notice there's a bit of a different um, difference there. So, which resource group? We want to create it in the dev box one again. I'm going to call this one itg mc hy for hybrid. Again, let's select the virtual network, but we need to put in the domain. So it's iamitgeek.com. Now, just preempt this. My, my, you need to make sure. The, the 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 network so the network i've chosen here has sight of my domain controllers so this is a separate uh, virtual network i've got my domain controllers are on another virtual network in azure and i've got pairing between them okay so just make sure uh, wherever your domain controllers are you might just put if you were just doing a demo and just practicing you might just put them all on the same virtual network but my Domain controller is on a separate virtual network, so I do have pairing between the dev box VNet01 and my domain controller virtual network, which I think is VNet01 potentially. Anyway, put in the uh, the domain name. So again, um, just say put, put the domain name in, in the fully full qualified domain name. Mine's iomite.com. Put, put an organizational unit there if you want, and then you can put in the AD username and password. Um, so I'll put... Um, uh, so this should, is that a domain control? Yeah, I can jump onto my domain control here. I'll put my password in. So this has to be okay, and that's my, yep, perfect. Then any tags. I'm not putting in for this and then validations pass. Let's create that. So once that's created, we'll go into the network connections bit in um, Dev Center and we'll add these two network connections to our Dev Center. Yep, another quite short couple of seconds. Right, let's go back into Dev Center now. And we want to go down to networking here. Got nothing in here. So let's add a network connection. So let's add the Entra one first. Just going to run us some checks first. Um, and I'll, I'll run multiple checks and we'll, we'll look at the checks once it'll tell us what those checks are. Go to see, just make sure it's connected to Entra, make sure it's got all the other um, prerequisites 
Um, let's say, same when we're doing the um, when we're doing the uh, hybrid one. It checks as long you know to make sure I can see the domain controllers and so on. Um, so let it run those checks, um, and then we should be able to add it. So it can take a while to run the status checks. Let's just quick let's just get that added at least, and then in the background that'll run those checks. Gonna run those checks. Um, and while that's adding, let's actually add our second one as well. So I want to add the hybrid one as well. Again, it's going to take a while. It's going to want to check. Um, and then click on add there. And those those are essentially integrated. Now, again, like I said, it's going to run those checks for a while. So what we'll do is in the next demo, we'll come and check if, those, if, if we'll come and look at the status and make sure they're all green. And we'll look at the different things that are checked as well. Um, so that was just a quick demo to show. So we've done the dev center. We've done the network connections now um, in, in the next... Um, video again we'll do another demo we'll create some compute galleries uh so yeah hopefully you're enjoying this this series um i've really enjoyed recording it it's, you know going back to my original passion of vdi um so you know drop me a comment with, with your thoughts on, on the content I'm, I'm sharing around devbox and i'm interested to see if people have any if people have actually used it if you're a developer and you've used devbox what are your thoughts on it please do drop me a comment around that love to start some you know engage some conversation around that uh, please keep an eye out for my giveaway. Um, it is, it's going to be a 20k giveaway. I'm like, I'm, I'm very close to it, so I thought, why not do a giveaway? So I'll, I'll be, if, if not, again, at the, at the time of recording this, I've not released the details. I might have done by the time this video comes out. Um, so yeah, thank you for, for watching this video. We're, we're going to continue on the dead box topic in the next episode, so please join me. So until next time, thank you and goodbye.